A real quick, another article I wanted to share with y'all. And also I wanted to just let everyone know if you hadn't had a chance to listen to our interview with Texas Slim, please go subscribe over to the Fearless Podcast and uh, request notifications. Also, if you love the Fearless Podcast, if you could please leave us a review, it helps the algorithm to push that out. But definitely check out uh, How to Fix Our Broken Food System with Texas Slim. It's episode 14 of the Fearless Podcast. We appreciate it. And let's jump into this article here. This comes from the Mises Institute. And this is talking about this um, BRICS summit. And uh, I thought there were some really good points made here I wanted to cover. The summit of the so-called BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, has closed with an invitation to join the group extended to the Emirates, Egypt, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and Ethiopia. The summit has generated a lot of headlines about the impact of this widespread group of nations, including speculation about the end of the U.S. dollar as a global reserve currency if this group is perceived as a threat to the United States or even the International Monetary Fund. Several things need to be clarified. Many political analysts believe that China lends, invests, or supports in return for nothing. China is a major economic power, but it has no interest in being a global reserve currency. Its currency is currently used in only 5% of global transactions, according to the Bank of International Settlements. Now, one thing I want to point out is when you hear about IMF and BIS, these are these international conglomerates that are part of the banking cartel, and all parts of this banking cartel are interlaced and interrelated, which makes a lot of this fiat talk relative, so to speak, because regardless of whichever fiat currency is chosen, it still takes the movements of the IMF and BIS to transact and make all this stuff happen. So in a very large way, when it comes to national currencies there's still so much uh control by these intergalactic you know banking cartel that it makes a lot of currency stuff uh relative as far as when it comes to control and different things like that um china and russia have capital controls it is impossible to have a global reserve currency without freedom of capital movement more requirements are needed than solid gold reserves to have a stable fiat currency. It is essential to guarantee economic freedom, investment, legal security, and the free movement of capital, as well as an open, transparent, and diversified financial system. China and Russia are much more demanding and rigorous lenders than many politicians think. It seems that some emerging market politicians think that joining China and Russia will be kind of a free money panacea. Another problem with creating a BRICS currency that is uh, is that logically neither Russia nor China has the slightest intention of losing their national currency to dilute it alongside a group of issuers who have a doubtful track record in controlling their monetary imbalances. Over the past 10 years, the currencies of the BRICS gas countries have depreciated significantly against the U.S. dollar. The Argentine peso has fallen by 98%, the Egyptian pound by 78%, the Indian rupee by 35%, the Ethiopian burr by 68%, the Brazilian real by 55%, according to Bloomberg, and the Iranian real has collapsed by 90%, according to The Economist. Putting together weak currencies does not create a strong currency yeah and furthermore i would also interject that china does an inordinate amount of uh currency manipulation and uh dilution and they you know just like all of the development that china has been doing of these tofu cities and if you want to uh research and look at something interesting just um search in your brave browser 
uh, I'm almost positive the term is tofu cities. And it's about these cities that are made out of absolute trash deal. They're empty. They're hollow. They're uh, for photo ops, I guess. And uh, they're falling apart immediately, much like uh, all of the stuff that China creates that is uh, already well-planned with obsolescence. Everything that they're doing within their own country, they're doing in the same form and fashion, which is it's fascinating. It's interesting. Um, it is communism, so there you go, and it's delusional. So uh, we must not forget that the performance of the Russian ruble uh, down 68% against the U.S. dollar, according to Bloomberg, in the last decade has also been poor, despite having a relatively prudent central bank. The best bricks and gas currency against the U.S. dollar in the last 10 years is the Chinese yuan, with a depreciation of only 14%. For a fiat currency to be stable, it is necessary that the issuer defend it as a reserve of value, a generally accepted payment method, and a unit of measure, freedom of capital, and independent institutions that provide legal security to domestic and international investors are needed. Having a strong military power does not guarantee a currency accepted as a reserve of value as demonstrated by the disastrous Soviet COPEC, despite the USSR's influence on half of the world. So we've seen these different attempts at creating um, default currency, uh, uh, reserve currencies, world currencies, and their impact against the dollar that have already failed. Um, I think the euro is a great example. And every there was a lot of predictions about the euro and how it was going to become overtake the dollar. And it just didn't happen. It doesn't mean that it won't happen. But we continue to follow these different examples. And what they usually result in is just dilution and devaluation and distribution of wealth. Like we talk about all the time, just like the stock market and conventional um, investing is just a redistribution of wealth from those that want to retire someday to the Elon Musker nuts of the world and the Jeff Bezoses and the Bill Gates and the banking cartel. And all you need to do is read Barry Dyke's book, Pirates of Manhattan. I think there's also Pirates of Manhattan 2, and I think Pirates of Manhattan 3 is coming out uh, by December of this year. So I definitely highly encourage you to read that. And I want to pause for a minute and give you uh, one potential solution as far as uh, when it comes to investing a store of value, uh, creating an asset group for you and your family and, uh, and private. Uh, we, we, we participate in what's called private family banking, and that's how we accumulate assets and wealth and it, that's also how we protect our buying power. So I'm going to let Chuck tell you more about his new book. Hey, Chuck DeLaurenti here, your private family banking resource. With the banking industry and another tailspin in the Fed ready to raise interest rates again, many of you are asking, when will this madness stop? If you're interested in learning how to establish a family banking system that will reside outside of today's mainstream banking insanity, You'll want to schedule a call with me, your sponsor here of the podcast from Private Family Banking. There's a way for individuals and families to create a pool of money, put that money to work, earning continuously compounding interest, and have that ever-growing pool of capital available as collateral for cash and for financing investments, businesses, college, and other major life expenditures without going to the big banks for loans. Imagine having control of your cash assets in a system that is free from the big bankers while enjoying liquidity, access to your money, safety, security, seeing your money grow continuously, tax protected, knowing that your money is immune from the stock market losses, growing your money at guaranteed rates and having your precious wealth stored away with protections from court judgments and lawsuits, and ultimately the thrill and peace of mind that through having your own lifelong banking system that will pass along wealth, wealth to future generations and avoid the death tax on your estate. You can do this. If this intrigues you, go to protectyourmoneynow.net and download my new free ebook or just call me 
Chuck at 830-339-9472. That's 830-339-9472 and schedule an appointment today. God bless. All right. Thanks, Chuck. I'm going to put the link to Chuck's book in the notes down below for your reference. And let's get back to the article. Joining countries with governments that advocate monetizing uncontrolled public spending and massively increasing monetary imbalances cannot create a stable currency unless they implement the example of the euro. In the euro, Germany, the country with the most prudent and responsible fiscal policy, dictated the main lines of the monetary and fiscal rules for the rest. Unfortunately, the Eurozone and the ECB, in trying to play to be the U.S. and the Federal Reserve, have lost most of their options to be a real alternative to the U.S. dollar. And the euro is the greatest fiat monetary success in the post Bretton Woods era. Let us not deprive it of its merits. The BRICS alternative starts with... A major Achilles heel. China and Russia are going to have major difficulties imposing fiscal and monetary policy restrictions on their partners. Let us not forget that several of these partners have joined the group thinking that from now on they will be able to continue printing money and spending without control. But their monetary imbalances will be distributed to other nations. The euro has been a success because liberal democracies with independent institutions and broad economic freedom and legal certainty agreed to align their policies for the common good. Oh, goody. Creating a solid currency that avoided the debacle created by the inflationary spirals that were the norm in Europe historically when governments devoted themselves to transferring their imbalances to citizens' wages and savings through monetary destruction. This does not seem easily replicable with BRICS and gas. China, however, can increase its control over all these countries by implementing rigorous monetary and fiscal policies. It is the strongest lender in all the BRICS, but it's unlikely to take on the role of the Euro's Germany, willing to absorb the excesses of others in exchange for a common project. Yeah, all you have to do is look at Germany now with all of its power struggles and its crumbling infrastructure and crumbling power infrastructure, uh, hyperinflation there, and it is bearing the brunt of the euro debacle. Uh, and that's as good as it gets for the euro, and it is destroying Germany's economy. Uh, China is going to increase its controls over the countries in the group, but it is not likely to jeopardize the stability and security of its enormous population by sinking the currency. The Chinese government is probably analyzing how the euro is losing monetary prudence and reaching the conclusion that it cannot take that same risk with some of these new partners. However, China will probably make the most of its financial strength to lend, increase their domestic and international growth options, and access abundant and cheap commodities. China is the big winner of the BRICS summit. The Chinese government probably knows that many of its partners are going to continue increasing their imbalances, and this may allow China to strengthen its leadership position. However, I find it hard to believe that China will agree to the creation of a currency and that others can use to trigger inflationary imbalances. Meanwhile, In the U.S., the government may jeopardize the credibility of the U.S. dollar if it continues to generate deficits of $2 trillion a year, more than a $14 trillion estimated deficit by 2030. Wow, there's 2030 again. There's lots of things that are going to happen by 2030, and everything's going to be great and perfect by 2030 when we decrease the CO2, right? And do all that stuff, 2030, 2030, 2030. (laughs) And with an increasing number of irresponsible advisors saying that it can create all the money at once without risk, the fiscal credibility, institutional dependence, and economic freedom of the U.S. dollar, the most widely used currency in the world, cement its leadership. If the government undermines these strengths, the dollar will lose its reserve status. The end of the U.S. dollar, if it comes, will not arrive through competition from another fiat currency as the temptation of governments to destroy the purchasing power of the issued currency is too strong. It will probably come from independent currencies. 
and these independent currencies by many are much like uh, <clears throat> cryptos such as Bitcoin. And if you want to know a little bit more about Bitcoin, Texas Slim talked about it in our last Fearless podcast, episode 14. Once again, I want to encourage you to check that out. Uh, we have, for a very long time, have been advocating in investing in infrastructure and real estate, dirt coin, real property, real infrastructure. And that is, you know, we homestead. So, you know, we, we buy tractors and we're looking to buy a backhoe, maybe a skid steer. Uh, we have a greenhouse. We have about 400 fruit trees. We have a, we have a decent size herd of cattle that we are expanding. And these are real assets with real value that appreciate and hold their value and are easily accessible and convertible into one of the most prized possessions, food, you know, and having a pantry and storing a bunch of food is only as relevant as your ability to replenish that. Um, this notion and concept of some kind of like apocalyptic radiation proof bunker buried under the ground with 25 years of storable food that isn't nutrient dense and is basically just a caloric uptake for minimal survival um, is not the type of life that we want to uh, consider or think about, not to saying that it's not a possibility or an option. Uh, God is in control, but, um, you know, we want to be broad in our scope and thinking. And if you are not considering how you're going to replenish what you have stored in your pantry, um, it kind of becomes relevant and relative to a very incredibly short time frame. And uh, there's not a lot of hope in all that. It's pretty, pretty bleak and abysmal. Also, I want to remind you, y'all, uh, some of us are going to be at Mountain Ready Readiness at the end of October, and we're looking forward to any of y'all that are in the North Carolina area. We're going to take advantage of that meetup. Uh, they're putting on a great uh, two or three day program there, Mountain Readiness. So definitely check that out. I'm going to try to remember to put those notes below. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, subscribe on whatever platform you're on. We appreciate you all. Thank you to all of our meat customers. If you are in the Northeast Texas area, check out the TexasBoys.com. Uh, we still have some beef available, so check that out. And if you're looking for coffee, teas, some organic, non-vaccinated honey, uh, we have that. We've restocked, and we're shipping that out now. We love and appreciate you all, and we'll see you all on the next video.